Hello and welcome to Shine Your Light TV, the place to be to find out more about self-expression and shining your unique light out into the world. And have we got a show for you. I'm so excited because the queen of question time is back. Miss Dolly, pardon, is here to answer a fantastic question this week. This is something that's affected me and I think affects every single person in the world. So without any further ado, let's hand it over to Dolly Pardon. Welcome to Shine Your Light TV. I've been on tour, so I couldn't do the last episode, but I know Lindsay did it for you, and I saw it when I was on tour, and it was so great to see what Lindsay thought of self-expression. So Dolly's back for Q&A with Dolly Pardon. And this week's question comes from, I'm just looking down here, at the laptop because they've got the question down here. Comes from Euphemia in the Blue Mountains. I love the Blue Mountains. It's beautiful up there and it's uh, in New South Wales in Australia. Euphemia asks, well it's kind of like a, it's a weird long letter. I like this one. It's good. There's a, there's a lot of efforts being put into this one. Dear Dolly, I hope you can help me with a problem. I have this friend who not only is younger than me, but she's very pretty and super talented. She's a singer, songwriter, impressionist, author, an innovative entrepreneur. She plays keyboard and guitar, and now she's making and starring in movies with messages to help others. I'm that jealous I could just fry myself in oil, batter myself in lard, and drink about a gallon of grandma's elixir and just die. Oh, honey. But I also want to tell this friend that I admire her abilities and good heart. She's amazing and her hubby's pretty cool too. Thanks, Dolly. Hope, you, hope to hear from you soon. P.S. Dolly, you sure do have really, really big, wobbly, bouncy, jiggly body. Do you use conditioner or is your hair just naturally like that? <laughs> I like that. Oh, you know, honey, you know, Dolly, everything here is natural. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, Euphemia, what what you're talking about here, I think, is jealousy. And this affects every single one of us. Even Dolly has had her demons with jealousy. So it's really, I think, it's a three-pronged approach that we're going to come at this question with. Three-pronged approach. Okay, Euphemia, so we're going for the three-pronged approach for this question. So the first thing I want to see say about jealousy and the green-eyed monster, I'm wearing my green, the green-eyed monster is this. I think about 90% of the time when we're jealous of someone else, it's because they're displaying things that we have within ourselves that could be expressed, but perhaps aren't being expressed. So 90% of the time, I don't think you can really be jealous of someone who's doing something that you don't have yourself or that you're not really interested in or that doesn't strike a chord with you. So for example, Dolly's never jealous of an Olympic javeliner because I got no interest in javelin. In fact, 
I try to stay away from sharp objects. So, whereas over the years I've been jealous, even Dolly, I've been jealous of maybe singers, other singers, or other actresses or writers, you know, that seem to be doing better than me. But really, when I, when I see that and I have that feeling of jealousy, it's a signal, it's a sign to me that there is something that maybe I'm not paying attention to. If I'm jealous somebody's brought out a book or something like that, you know, it's because I probably got a book inside me and, and that's sparking it off. I'm jealous because I see part of myself that's unexpressed. So that's the first thing I want to say, Euphemia. And it's obvious to me that you're a great writer and you got a really good sense of humor. So I'm hoping you're doing something with that. So the second prong in this approach uh, to do with jealousy and the green-eyed monster, and this is probably only 10% of the time, maybe you're jealous of somebody who has something you don't have the ability to have. So, for example, and I'm not mentioning any names, but years ago in the 70s, Dolly was a little bit jealous of a very good friend of hers because she had such a great body and she had beautiful dark eyes and dark hair. I'm not mentioning any names. And Dolly was really jealous of this lady because she just had this waif-like figure and these beautiful brown eyes and this brown hair. And Dolly started to feel bad because she was like, I wish I looked like that. And so I was jealous. But that's one of the, the times where it's in a situation where I'm never going to be waif-like. You know, I had to deal with the fact that I got a bit of a pear shape going on. But what that was was a signal to me that I wasn't appreciating my assets. You know, and, and it's a great quote, and I can't remember who said it, but... The man who knows more about his liabilities than his assets is destined to fail. So the thing was, I got over the jealousy when I started to be grateful for what I had and my beautiful hair and my beautiful eyes. And when I started to express that more and more in the way that I dressed and the way that I was, and I stopped being jealous of that person who I'm not going to mention. So, the third prong to this, this is kind of another avenue here about jealousy. And that is that perhaps it can be related to what they call status anxiety. And this was like a phrase coined by a guy called, I think it's Elaine Bottom, bottom, something like that. He's a new, you know, modern day philosopher. And he's actually done a really interesting video. If you go on YouTube, you can check it out called Status Anxiety by Elaine de Bottom, something like that. Anyway, he said that in this modern time, you know, we're constantly bombarded with advertising and all this kind of stuff telling us we're not where we should be. So sometimes this jealousy that comes up for us isn't even warranted because it's got to do with status anxiety and that we're not at the status we should be at. Now, um, should is not one of my favorite words. And there is a lady called Louise Hay who hates the word should too. And I agree with her. Much better to put the word could. If you think I should do this, I should do that. I could do this. I could do that. Kind of makes it a little bit more empowering. Anyway, that's, a, that's another video. So I just wanted to put in that little bit there that perhaps sometimes jealousy is due to a bit of status anxiety because we're constantly comparing ourselves to other people. And it's a great quote, and I can't remember who said it, but comparison is the thief of joy. I'm going to say that again because it's such a great quote. Comparison is the thief of joy. 
So when we're constantly comparing ourselves to others, it takes a little bit of joy away. Well, maybe it'll become clearer to you if I sing it in a song. Okay, Euphemia, I wrote a little ditty just for you. Comparison is a thief of joy And it just don't matter if you're a girl or a boy It'll make you feel like you just ain't enough And I can tell you now, you're made of better stuff All of life's a mirror looking back at you And what you see in others, well you have it too and with a little love, you can shine it all right through. Yeehaw. Well, thanks, folks. Thanks for tuning in again. And great question from Euphemia this week. Remember, if you want your questions answered by Dolly, and Dolly to write you a little ditty, make sure you send your questions to info at lindsaydrummond.com. I'm sure they're going to put that up there on the screen. Until next time, see you later. Do you reckon they, uh, do you reckon they've noticed that I'm playing the same chords for all the songs? <laughs> see, I don't compare myself to other people who are better guitarists. I just do it. And thank you so much, Dolly, for that. That was fantastic. And another great song. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So uh, let me just apologize that this episode was a little bit late this month. I've been really busy. I got the opportunity to sing jazz at the Opera House. Wow. Even though I'm not a jazz singer. <laughs> uh, but a sort of series of serendipitous events allowed me to be asked to do that. And since jazz is the self-expression capital of music, uh, I thought, hey, why not? Also, uh, something else that I'd love to tell you about, I've written my first book. So this was a big challenge for me because I've been a songwriter for 20 years, but writing a book was pretty huge. And just like Dolly was talking about jealousy, well, I went through my Oh, a little feather. I went through <laughs> my times with getting jealous of other people who were writing books until I finally said, you know what, just like Dolly said, if I'm jealous, then there must be a book in me. And so, and here it is. It's probably going to be reflecting a little bit because it's in a DVD case, because it's an e-book. And I had a pre-launch for this down in the Southern Highlands and great response a lot of people bought it and I've had some really good feedback which is just well it's been a relief but it's also just warmed my heart that people have embraced the book so much so this is an ebook at the moment I'll probably start doing printed stuff later on but I wanted to do the ebook first and basically it's a memoir so it's about my life and some of you may know, some of you may not, that I've been a songwriter for 20 years. And so I thought, what a great idea to write a book and include my song lyrics in the book so that I tell little short stories about my life from birth till now and all the little songs go along with it. So it also, it's a multimedia memoir and it comes with 45 MP3s of songs that I've recorded between 1995 and the latest single, Treadmill 2015. So if you want to support Shine Your Light TV uh, with some money, which would be fantastic, then go on Amazon and look up Finding the Ferryman by Lindsay Drummond. And I would greatly appreciate that. I would also appreciate some more subscribers to the channel. So if you like Shine Your Light TV, please share it share it amongst your networks and subscribe because I love doing this and I really think that some great messages are getting out there. So if you agree with that and you want to support me, then please, please like the Facebook, join the YouTube and send me some loving vibes. So that's it 
from Shine Your Light TV. I am Lindsay Drummond. And you know what? We are all unique. Not one other person in this world has the same fingerprint as you. You're special. And what you have to give to the world is special. I want to see you shining your light out into the world. So remember, be a voice, not a message.